All right, thanks for watching. And since life is all about connections, today we'll talk about connectedness. Now, what is a connected set? It's something that's not disconnected, I know. <laughs> but disconnected just means that it has two separate pieces in some sense. So let me define this definition. E, which is, if you want, a, a subset of a metric space or even of a topological space, is disconnected if uh, there are two subsets, so if they are, they are non-empty, open, and disjoint, so the intersecting section is empty, this joint subsets A and B A and B of E whose union is uh, E such that A union B is E. In other words, E consists of two disjoint pieces. Like this is A and this is B, and then E is just all of that. Um, so for instance, at the intervals 0, 1, union at 2, 3. So those two intervals, 0, 1, and 2, 3, those are disconnected because they are two separate pieces, the interval 0, 1 and the interval uh, 2, 3. But there are other ones, like think of the lemisate, so the infinity symbol, but you remove the middle term here, then you do have two separate pieces here, A and B. And what would connected mean? It just means it's not disconnected. So uh, definition, A, E is connected. if E is not disconnected. Disconnected. And in particular, it's very important to understand, usually um, proofs that something is connected, they go by contradiction, because you assume it's disconnected and then you find something weird happening. Why is connectedness so important? Well, let me give you almost a two second proof of the intermediate value theorem. So, uh, fact. So suppose you have a function f from a, b to r, that is continuous, then for every c between f of a and f of b, and f of b, uh, there is x such that f of x equals c. x in a, b with f of x equals c. And uh, in fact, I believe this also holds for any connected set. So it doesn't matter here. And picture-wise, what is this saying? Well, suppose you have the closed interval a comma b, and you have a function that kind of goes from f of a to f of b. Then what this is saying is, well, for any number between f of a and f of b, for any c, uh, the horizontal line y equals c must intersect the graph somewhere. In other words, f attains all the values between f of a and f of b. Now, usually it's proven using some weird you know, uh, um, contradiction in Volzan or Weierstrass, but here it's more, much more elegant proof. So, proof. Well, suppose not. And what this means is that f skips the value c. So the way it might look like, it looks like this, but this is c, and then it looks like that. 
Okay, so if you want this is f of a and f of b. Okay, this is a and b. And what we would like to do, we would like to consider two sets. We would like to consider the values where f is less than c and the values where f is bigger than c. So consider the following thing. So A is just the set of points in AB where f of x is less than c. So at least in this picture, it's this thing here. So all the values where f is less than c, and similarly, uh, all the values where f is bigger than c. So in b, all the values where f is bigger than c. Now, uh, first of all, they're non-empty because f of a or f of b, they're either in a or in b, and the point is one of them has to be in a and the other one has to be in b. So at least in this picture, f of a is here and then f of b is here, or vice versa. You just reverse this. And that's because c is between f of a and f of b. So those are non-empty and they are open because Really, this is the same thing as f, the pre-image of the interval minus infinity comma c. And because this is open and f is continuous, this thing is open. And similarly, b is f inverse of the interval c comma infinity. Okay. So at least in this picture, if this is c, then a is just a set of points where f is less than c, so the pre-image of minus infinity comma c, and b is just the set of points where f is bigger than c. So the set of points, uh, the pre-image of c comma infinity. And as I said, this is open, and similarly this is open. So a, b are non-empty and open, but now let's look at the intersection. Well. Of course, A and B have an empty intersection because you cannot have f of x less than c and greater than c at the same time. So this is not multi-track drifting. And finally, what is A union B? Well, notice any point in AB is, has either f of x less than c or f of x greater than c because we assume f of x is never equal c. So a union b is a comma b. And so what have we found? We found non-empty open subsets that are disjoint and whose union is the interval a comma b, but that would imply that a comma b is connected. So a comma b is disconnected. because you would have two separate pieces, but uh, in another video, we can actually show that this is connected. So, and I hope you, you agree that it's kind of obvious that it, is, it does consist of one piece. That's a contradiction, and therefore we have proven the intermediate value theorem. So you see how elegant this is? I really like this. Right. However, there are other nice uh, properties of connected sites. So properties, namely just like for compact sets, the, uh, if you apply a continuous function to a connected set, then the output is also connected. So if uh, you have a function f from c to whatever, let's say f of c, is uh, continuous, then uh, f of c and c is connected. Then f of c is connected. Uh, 
which is very interesting because what this is saying is there is no continuous function let's say from the open interval 0 comma 1 to two pieces let's say 0 comma 1 half and uh, 3 halves comma 2 so no continuous function maps from 0 comma 1 to those two pieces so in other words no continuous function tears up an interval it just stretches it or you know by use it flip it that, that anyway <laughs> So just a continuous operation and how do we do this? Well, of course, as usual by contradiction, so proof, so suppose not, that is C connected, but F of C disconnected. Which means that f of c is again a union b with again a b non empty. So a b non empty open with empty intersection and the union being f of c. And you have to understand, this has to do with the output space. So this is C, and then this is F of C. And I'm saying that in this case, F of C has a separation. So there's those weird sets, A and B, that separate the two. And well, in order to go back to the input space, you would have to take pre-images. So let's consider, let's say f inverse of c, uh, f inverse of a, which is just a set of points that map to a, and consider f inverse of b, the set of points which map to B. And what we want to show is that those two are a separation of C, which contradicts the fact that C is connected. So again, let, uh, if you want A prime, B F inverse of A, and B prime, B F inverse of B. And the point is, this is open, because again A and B are open and F is continuous. So that's the most important topological property of continuity. And moreover, um, they're non-empty because you see by definition of F of C, there must be, um, how can I say, there must be a point that maps into A. So again, by assumption A is non-empty, so there's a point here, and by definition of f of c, there must be an x such that f of x is in A, but then by definition x must be in f inverse of A. And similarly, uh, B prime is non-empty. So they're open, they're non-empty. Uh, why do they have non-empty, why do you have empty intersection? Well, that's just by the property of pre-images. So A prime intersect B prime, that is F inverse of A intersect F inverse of B, but that's F inverse of A intersect B, and that's the pre-image of the empty set, because we know A intersect B is empty, and that's empty. So uh, they are disjoint, and similarly, one can show that a prime union b prime, that is f inverse of a union f inverse of b, but again by property of preimages, that's f inverse of a union b, but a union b is f of c. Now, in general, this thing is usually bigger than C, but because our domain of F was C, that's actually the same thing as C. Okay. So, the point is, uh, now we do have a separation of 
see and that contradicts the fact that um, uh, C is this is connected. So, um, so uh, a, a, a prime and B prime are a separation of C and that contradicts the fact that C is connected. All right, last but not least, you might be like, well, this concept of separation and connectedness, it's not very intuitive. For me, con connectedness would just mean that if you start with a point and another point, then you can just connect them with a path. And indeed, there's such a concept, and that's called path connectedness. Or in French, it's called connexité par arc, which sounds very different, but it just means, again, there's a path between two things. Now, suppose you have your set E, or I guess I call it C. So suppose you have your set C, then definition, okay, a path from a point A in C to a point B in C, all of it is, it's a continuous function gamma that starts at A and that ends at B. So in other words, such that the starting point is A and the ending point is B. So again, and such a, it's continuous and all the time it is in C. So is a continuous function gamma from 0, 1 to C with starting point A and ending point B. And it might remind you of your vector calculus shenanigans that you did where you had you know, uh, sort of um, line integrals and everything and you define a certain path. So this is a path except here we just required it to be con continuous and what does it mean to be path connected? It just means when at whatever points you have you can always find a path between those two points. So definition C is path connected if there is a point if for every A, B, and C there is a path from A to B. A to B. So again, no matter which points we pick, you can always connect them with a path. And for instance, well, R is path connected. And that's simply because if you have the real line, okay, and you start at two points, I'm give you two points A and B, well, there is a path, namely the segment just going from A to B. Then if you consider, let gamma t to be a 1 minus t a plus t b, okay, where t is from 0 comma 1, okay, then this is continuous and it's a path from A to B because gamma 0 well, that's 1 minus 0 times a plus 0 b, which is a, and gamma 1, that is 0 times a plus 1 times b, which is b. So this is indeed a path. So since a and b were arbitrary, r is path connected, but similarly any interval a comma b or open interval a comma b or even the circle like that. Because you, if I give you two points, just go around the circle like this and you have a path. All those are path connected. And why are those nice? Well, in fact, path connectedness, what's nice is it implies connectedness. 
So fact path connectedness implies connectedness. However careful, just a technical remark, do not use this to show that the interval is connected because it turns out the fact that the interval is connected, uh, you know, the fact that we have this relies on the fact that the interval is connected. So just be beware. And how, we show it, how do we show this? Well, actually very similar to a usual proof. So suppose, suppose C is path connected, but not connected. Again, what does not connected mean? It means that there is a separation, so there are. There are A, B in, uh, so there, there are sets A and B, non-empty, open, with disjoint thing, so a disjoint and A union B is the whole set C. So again, um, you have this set C, but it is has a separation. So this is A and this is B. And well, since it's non-empty, since each of them is non-empty, we can pick a point here, A here, and a point B here. And well, we know it's path connected, so there's a path between the two. So, so basically, since A and B are non-empty, there is A in A and B in B. And now, let's just consider a path. So let gamma from a, b, 0, 1, 2, c be a path from uh, a, b, uh, from a to b. Okay. And then, in other words, so gamma 0 is a and gamma 1 is b. And then what we want to do, we just want to consider the inverse images of a and b, and you'll see why. So let a prime be as before gamma inverse of a, and b prime be gamma inverse of b. So again, uh, we know that um, First of all, we know that A and B are open and open. And well, gamma is continuous, so all those things are open. And moreover, we know that it's non-empty because we know that gamma zero is A, so um, zero is in gamma inverse of A. Because you see, um, we know that there's at least a point that maps to A, namely 0, because gamma 0 is A, and that maps to A. And similarly, gamma 1 is B, and therefore 1 is in gamma inverse of B. And uh, that's one thing. So they're open, they're non-empty, and moreover, uh, they have in empty intersection. So A prime intersect B prime, that's gamma inverse of A, intersect gamma inverse of B, and that's gamma inverse of A intersect B. But we know this is empty, so we get gamma inverse of the empty set, which is empty. And last but not least, what is the union? Well, a prime union B prime, that is gamma inverse of 
A union gamma inverse of B. Put again by the nice property of pre-images that is a gamma inverse of A union B and that's gamma inverse of Again, by assumption, this is C, but again, where does gamma go from and to? Well, gamma, remember, goes from the interval 0, 1 to the set C, so in particular, the inverse image of the whole set is the whole interval. So what have we found? We found that A prime, B prime are non-empty, open, disjoint and their union is just 0 comma 1 but that's a problem because this means that a prime and b prime are a separation of 0 comma 1 so we've effectively divided up the interval 0 comma 1 into two sets a prime and b prime And that contradicts the fact that 0, 1 is connected. And therefore, um, path connectedness implies connectedness. But here's the question, is the converse true? So are there sets that are connected but not path connected? The answer is yes, and that will be the point of another video. So I know, a little cliffhanger, but it's a really cool video, you'll see. All right, I hope you like this. If you wanna see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.